Quit complaining. Use spiritual power to win every day. Before we dive into this powerful audiobook, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you're ready to learn something life-changing. Your support helps bring more audiobooks like this to the channel. Introduction. Breaking the Cycle of Complaining. In the depths of human existence, a subtle yet pervasive force lurks beneath the surface of our thoughts, shaping the landscape of our daily experience. This force is complaint, a shadowy current that pulls at the strings of our consciousness, leading us away from the light of divine power. To truly understand the transformative journey we are about to embark upon, we must first recognize that complaint is not merely a trivial habit. It is an energetic block, a siphon that drains us of the spiritual vitality we need to manifest our highest potential. Complaint weakens the will, clouds our vision, and separates us from the boundless flow of divine energy that is always available to us. By breaking free from this cycle, we unlock the hidden power that lies dormant within our souls, the power to shape our reality, to win every day, and to live a life in harmony with the universal laws. The ancient sages, the mystics who walked the corridors of occult knowledge, understood the corrosive power of complaint. In their wisdom, they taught that negative thought patterns, particularly those expressed through speech, are not only detrimental to the individual but also to the collective. These masters of inner wisdom knew that the mind and the word are intimately connected. Every thought we entertain, every word we speak, sets in motion unseen forces that either align us with the divine or draw us into the abyss of self-imposed limitation. Complaint, in this light, is far more than a bad habit, it is an act of resistance against the natural flow of cosmic order. It creates discord within our spiritual anatomy, disturbs the sacred harmony between our thoughts, emotions, and actions, and ultimately separates us from the divine energy that animates all creation. At the heart of every complaint lies a seed of discontent, a belief that the present moment is somehow insufficient or flawed. This belief, deeply rooted in spiritual ignorance, blinds us to the truth of our own divine power. Gnostic and Hermetic teachings remind us that all external conditions are reflections of our inner state. When we complain, we are, in essence, affirming a disconnection from the divine truth within us. We are reinforcing the illusion that we are powerless, that life is happening to us rather than through us. The great esoteric traditions have long warned against this trap, urging us to recognize complaint for what it is, a barrier between the soul and its rightful place in the cosmos. To transcend this barrier, we must first awaken to the realization that we are not victims of our circumstances, but creators of them. The journey ahead will require a profound shift in perspective, a willingness to explore the hidden dimensions of the self and confront the shadows that give rise to complaint. By understanding the deeper spiritual mechanics at play, we can begin to dismantle the patterns of thought and emotion that fuel our complaints. We will draw upon the wisdom of the ancient Gnostics, Rosicrucians, and Hermetic scholars to reveal the esoteric principles that can liberate us from the prison of negativity. These teachings, veiled in the symbolic language of the mystics, offer a pathway to reclaiming our power and transforming the very fabric of our reality. In doing so, we not only free ourselves from the cycle of complaint but also step into the role of the divine co-creator capable of manifesting a life of harmony, abundance, and spiritual fulfillment. This book is not merely a guide to quitting complaints, it is an invitation to mastery. Through the wisdom of the ages, we will learn how to harness the spiritual power that lies at the core of our being. We will uncover the hidden teachings that show us how to align our thoughts, words, and actions with the highest frequencies of the universe. As we journey through these teachings, we will discover that the power to win every day, to live a life free from complaint, is not found in external circumstances but within ourselves. It is in mastering the mind, aligning with the divine will, and transmuting negative energy into creative force that we find true success. And so, 
The time has come to step into the light of ancient wisdom, to release the grip of complaint, and to reclaim the full measure of our spiritual power. Chapter 1. The Esoteric Origins of Complaint In the labyrinth of spiritual and mental development, the nature of complaint is intricately woven into the fabric of human suffering. Gnostic teachings, those ancient whispers of forgotten wisdom, speak of the demiurge, the false god of this material realm who creates illusions of limitation and separation. Complaint, as it manifests in our lives, can be understood as one of the many tools of the demiurge, trapping us within a perception of lack and disconnection from the divine fullness. It is a mental and emotional mechanism that convinces us that something is wrong, that the present moment lacks the richness and perfection inherent in all creation. This illusion keeps us bound, unable to see beyond the veils of ignorance that obscure the truth of our power. From an esoteric perspective, complaint is not only a reflection of dissatisfaction with external conditions but also an indication of a deeper discontent within the soul. The Rosicrucian tradition, which combines elements of Hermeticism and Gnosticism, teaches that the soul's journey toward enlightenment is often obstructed by layers of false beliefs and emotional imbalances. These layers act as veils that distort our perception of reality, causing us to focus on what we perceive as wrong or lacking rather than on the inherent beauty and potential of the present moment. Complaint, therefore, becomes a form of resistance, a refusal to accept the divine unfolding of life as it is. In resisting, we cut ourselves off from the flow of spiritual energy that is constantly guiding us toward higher states of being. To understand complaint in this light is to recognize that it is not merely a verbal expression of dissatisfaction but a vibrational frequency that resonates throughout our entire being. Every time we complain, we send out waves of negative energy that ripple through our mental, emotional, and spiritual bodies. These waves create energetic blockages, disrupting the natural flow of life force energy and weakening our connection to the divine. In Hermetic philosophy, this is known as energetic leakage, a concept that refers to the loss of spiritual power through negative thoughts, words, and actions. When we complain, we leak energy, leaving ourselves depleted and vulnerable to further negativity. The teachings of the Hermetic and Rosicrucian schools remind us that we are creators of our reality, not passive recipients of external forces. Our thoughts and words are potent tools of manifestation, capable of shaping the world around us in accordance with our inner state. When we engage in complaint, we are, in effect, using these tools to create more of what we do not want. The law of cause and effect, one of the foundational principles of Hermeticism, teaches that every thought and word we express sets into motion a series of events that ultimately return to us in kind. Thus, when we complain, we perpetuate the very conditions we wish to escape, locking ourselves into a self-reinforcing cycle of negativity. To break free from this cycle, we must first cultivate an awareness of how complaint operates in our lives. This requires a deep, introspective inquiry into the beliefs and emotions that fuel our dissatisfaction. By examining the roots of our complaints, we can begin to dismantle the false narratives that keep us bound to lower frequencies of thought and emotion. The Gnostic tradition teaches that enlightenment comes through Gnosis, direct knowledge of the divine truth that resides within us. In the context of complaint, this means recognizing that the power to change our reality lies not in altering external circumstances but in transforming our inner state. When we align our thoughts and words with the higher vibrations of love, gratitude, and acceptance, we open ourselves to the flow of divine energy, allowing it to guide us toward greater harmony and fulfillment. Chapter 2. Mastering Thought, The First Step to Unleashing Willpower In the hidden recesses of the mind, where thoughts ripple like waves through an unseen ocean, lies the first and most vital step in mastering the will the mastery of thought itself. Hermetic teachings tell us that, the all is mind, that the universe itself is mental in nature, 
and that within this truth lies the key to our own power. If the universe is indeed a reflection of mind, then it follows that our thoughts shape the very nature of our reality. In this, we find the secret that every sage, seer, and mystic has known. To control one's thoughts is to control the universe around them. It is the realization that our desires, fears, and perceptions begin as subtle currents of consciousness, rippling out to create the world we experience. The hermetic principle of mentalism declares this as the foundation upon which all true magic is built. Thought is more than a fleeting image or passing emotion, it is a living force that shapes the inner and outer worlds. The Rosicrucians believed that each thought was a seed planted within the fertile soil of the soul, which, if tended to and cultivated, would manifest in the material plane. To achieve mastery of the will, one must first become aware of the nature of their thoughts, how they arise, how they are shaped, and how they influence one's actions. Gnostic teachings also hold that thought is the gateway to Gnosis, or higher knowledge. It is through the disciplined mind, free from distraction, that the light of divine knowledge can shine. In the labyrinth of thought, the initiate learns to discern between that which is true and that which is illusory, separating the gold of wisdom from the base metals of ignorance. Yet, the task of mastering thought is not one of suppression, but of transformation. To silence thought is not the goal, for thought is the expression of the creative force within us. Rather, the initiate must learn to direct thought, like a charioteer guiding powerful horses. There is a subtle art to this, known in Hermeticism as the practice of mental transmutation. Just as the alchemist transmutes lead into gold, so too must the seeker transmute negative or discordant thoughts into those that align with their higher purpose. Fear must be transmuted into courage, doubt into faith, and confusion into clarity. In this process, the mind becomes an instrument of the will, a finely tuned vehicle for the expression of one's true power. Mental discipline is at the heart of this process. In the ancient mystery schools, initiates were taught to still the mind, to hold a single thought in focus as though it were a candle flame flickering in the darkness. Such concentration not only sharpens the will but also opens the doorway to deeper states of awareness. Through practices such as meditation, the seeker learns to observe the flow of thoughts without becoming entangled in them. In this observation, there is a growing realization that the true self, the source of the will, is not the thoughts themselves, but the silent observer behind them. This shift in awareness is profound, for it moves one from identification with the mind to mastery over it. To strengthen thought is to strengthen the will. Through the practice of mental fasting, an ancient technique known to both Gnostics and Hermeticists, one can clear the mind of negative influences. This practice involves consciously refraining from feeding the mind with lower thoughts, such as envy, anger, or fear. Instead, the mind is nourished with higher vibrations, thoughts of love, wisdom, and purpose. Just as the body is purified through fasting from physical food, the mind is purified through the conscious selection of thoughts. As the seeker continues this practice, the mind becomes a clear vessel, capable of receiving and transmitting the true will of the higher self. It is here that the journey toward invincible will truly begins, with the recognition that the mind, when properly mastered, becomes the most powerful tool for shaping reality. Chapter 2. Mastering Thought, The First Step to Unleashing Willpower The mind, that eternal forge in which realities are shaped, lies at the heart of all creation. It is the first realm where the power of will begins its journey into manifestation. The hermetic principle of mentalism, encapsulated in the phrase, the all is mind, reveals a profound truth, that everything within the universe, both seen and unseen, stems from consciousness. This teaching invites us to recognize that to control the external world, we must first master the domain of thought. For thought is the primal seed from which the tree of life grows, 
and the quality of our thoughts determines the shape and texture of the realities we experience. To wield the will effectively, one must first bring the mind under the dominion of higher awareness, for an untamed mind breeds chaos and fragmentation, while a disciplined mind creates order and power. The thoughts that inhabit the corridors of our consciousness are not passive spectators, they are the architects of our destiny. In Gnostic teachings, the mind is likened to a divine spark that has become enmeshed in the material world, clouded by ignorance, fear, and delusion. The Demiurge, in Gnostic cosmology, represents not only a false god but also the false thoughts and mental patterns that imprison the soul within a limited, mundane reality. These mental constructs serve to veil the soul from its true power, keeping the will subdued under the weight of doubt and illusion. Thus, the path of mental mastery begins by recognizing the illusory nature of the negative thoughts and limiting beliefs that cloud our divine potential. Every thought carries energy, and each one builds the invisible architecture of our lives. To unlock the fullness of the will, we must dismantle these false structures and replace them with those built on clarity, strength, and purpose. Mental discipline is the cornerstone upon which the edifice of willpower is constructed. Just as an alchemist meticulously refines base metals into gold, so too must we refine our thoughts, distilling out the impurities of doubt, fear, and distraction. In this way, we transmute the base elements of the mind into the radiant gold of focused intention. Through the process of self-observation, one learns to discern between the fleeting whims of the lower mind and the enduring clarity of the higher self. In the teachings of the ancient sages, one is taught to engage in mental fasting, to periodically withdraw from the incessant chatter of the mind and the external world to cultivate inner silence. It is within this silence that the true voice of will emerges, uncluttered by the noise of superficial thought. The practice of mindfulness, long revered in esoteric traditions, is not merely a tool for relaxation but a powerful means of sharpening the blade of thought so that it may cut cleanly through the distractions that weaken the will. Gnostic traditions emphasize the necessity of purifying the mind to access the higher realms of thought, where true power resides. In the Hermetic tradition, the mind is viewed as both the creator and destroyer of worlds. The key to mastering thought lies in recognizing the subtle currents of the subconscious mind, for it is here that many of our most deeply ingrained beliefs and fears reside. These hidden layers of consciousness often dictate our actions without our awareness, creating patterns of self-sabotage and limitation. By bringing these shadowy elements into the light of conscious awareness, we begin the process of mental alchemy, transmuting fear into courage, doubt into faith, and confusion into clarity. The ancient alchemists spoke of solve et coagula, to dissolve and reassemble. In the realm of thought, this means dissolving the mental constructs that no longer serve us and reassembling them into structures that support our highest purpose. To master the mind is to unlock the infinite potential of the will. As we bring thought under the governance of higher awareness, we begin to harness the creative power that shapes worlds. In practical terms, this mastery begins with daily exercises in concentration and focus, allowing the mind to rest upon a single point of intention. This might take the form of meditative visualizations, where the mind is directed toward a desired outcome or goal, or it could involve the repetition of affirmations that align thought with the divine. In the silence of contemplation, one learns to listen to the whispers of the higher self, which guide the will toward its true path. The mastery of thought is not an end in itself but a gateway to the deeper mysteries of willpower. For when the mind becomes a clear vessel, the will flows through it like a river of light, unimpeded and unstoppable, shaping reality in accordance with its divine blueprint. Chapter 3. The Heart of the Will, Understanding Desire and Intention In the hidden chambers of the soul, desire is the initial spark of creation, the primordial flame from which all manifestations emerge. 
From the ancient teachings of Gnosticism and the Hermetic traditions, desire is not a mere longing or fleeting want. It is the divine engine of the will itself, propelling one toward the realization of inner and outer worlds. But desire, like an unrefined ore, must be purified and honed into a sharp, focused intention to be truly powerful. The sages and alchemists of old understood that the untempered flame of raw desire can burn out of control, leading to chaotic outcomes and dissatisfaction. To wield the will effectively, one must learn to harness and transmute desire into a disciplined and purposeful intention. In this way, the heart of the will is not just in its power to act but in its ability to channel divine purpose through desire. Desire, as ancient mystics taught, is the reflection of the soul's yearning for unity with the divine. Every longing, every aspiration, no matter how mundane it seems, has its roots in the soul's quest to reunite with the higher planes of existence. According to the Rosicrucians, the journey of the soul through the material world is guided by an inner desire to return to the original source of all being, the pleroma, or the fullness of divine light. Yet, in the physical realm, desires often become entangled in material illusions, clouded by the ego's need for temporary pleasures and distractions. These false desires must be recognized and burned away in the crucible of self-awareness, leaving only the purified will aligned with the soul's true intention. This process of refining desire is akin to the alchemical transformation of base metals into gold. The base desires of the ego must be transmuted into the spiritual gold of divine intention. The sages of Hermeticism taught that intention is the focal point where desire becomes manifest. The great Hermetic axiom, as above, so below, reveals that desire originates in the higher realms and is mirrored in the material world. Yet, without clear intention, desire remains scattered and ineffective, like rays of sunlight diffused through clouds. Intention acts as the lens that focuses the diffuse energy of desire into a laser-like beam, capable of cutting through the obstacles of doubt, fear, and external resistance. In this way, the heart of the will is revealed. It is the marriage of desire and intention with the will serving as the unifying force that channels the energy of desire through the precise, directed intention of the mind. To master the heart of the will, one must cultivate an awareness of their desires, discerning which are the expressions of the higher self and which are distractions of the ego. This is no easy task, for the world is filled with seductive illusions that can easily lead the soul astray. In Gnostic teachings, the archons, or rulers of the material world, are often depicted as entities that feed on humanity's misguided desires, keeping souls trapped in the cycles of ignorance and suffering. It is only through the inner work of identifying and releasing these false desires that one can break free from the archon's influence and align their will with the divine. Through meditation, introspection, and the practice of aligning one's thoughts with one's higher self, the seeker can purify their desires and ensure that their intentions are in harmony with the universal flow. The final alchemy of desire and intention is found in the realization that the will is not just an individual force but a reflection of the universal will. As the Rosicrucians and Hermetricists taught, the personal will, when purified, is a microcosm of the larger cosmic will that governs the universe. When the seeker learns to align their personal will with the greater will of the cosmos, they become a co-creator in the divine plan, effortlessly manifesting their desires in accordance with the flow of the universe. In this state, desires no longer arise from the ego but from the soul's deep connection with the divine. It is in this alignment that the true heart of the will is revealed, not as a force of personal ambition, but as an expression of the divine intention to bring light, love, and harmony into the world. This is the sacred marriage of desire and intention, the ultimate alchemy of the will. Chapter 4. Alchemical Transformation, The Will as a Tool for Inner Alchemy In the ancient art of alchemy, the transformation of base metals into gold was always a metaphor for a deeper, more profound journey, 
the transformation of the self. The will, in this context, is the primary agent of change, the divine fire that fuels the entire process of inner transmutation. Just as the alchemist seeks to purify metals, so too does the individual seek to purify the soul, refining and elevating the baser aspects of their being into something far more potent and sacred. The will is not merely a passive observer but the very crucible in which this transformation takes place. Through focused intent and unwavering resolve, the self can be shaped, reformed, and reborn into a new state of consciousness, one that reflects the purity of gold, free from the imperfections of the ego and the limitations of the material world. The alchemical process begins with negretto, the blackening, which symbolizes the dissolution of all that is impure within. In terms of will, this means breaking down the mental patterns, habits, and emotions that keep one trapped in a lower state of being. This phase is often marked by challenges, darkness, and inner confrontation. The will must remain strong here, for it is the guiding force that allows one to confront the shadows within. The Hermeticists teach that this phase is vital, for without first acknowledging and dismantling the old structures, no new creation can take form. The individual must face their fears, doubts, and insecurities with courage, knowing that the fire of transformation is inevitable and necessary for the creation of something higher. Following Negretto comes Albedo, the whitening, where the self begins to emerge purified from the ashes of its former state. Here, the will takes on the role of the alchemical fire, continuously refining the newly revealed aspects of the self. The Rosicrucians viewed this stage as the cleansing of the soul, where the divine spark within begins to shine more clearly. It is in this phase that the will is harnessed to maintain clarity and focus, as the individual begins to align more closely with their higher purpose. In this context, the will is not just the force that breaks down the old but also the energy that sustains and nurtures the new. The individual becomes an active participant in their own spiritual refinement, directing their will toward the cultivation of inner light and wisdom. The final stage in the alchemical journey is Rubedo, the reddening, where the spiritual and material aspects of life are united in harmony. The will at this stage is fully empowered, having undergone the trials of transformation. It is here that the alchemist achieves the philosopher's stone, a symbol of complete mastery over both the internal and external worlds. The will, now fully aligned with divine will, becomes a tool for the conscious manifestation of higher realities. The individual, having transmuted their lower nature, is now capable of wielding their will with precision, shaping their life in accordance with higher truths. It is the culmination of the alchemical journey, a point where the self is no longer bound by fear, doubt, or limitation but is a conscious co-creator with the universe. In this process of alchemical transformation, the will acts as the divine catalyst, the inner fire that both destroys and creates. Without will, no transformation is possible, for it is through the consistent application of focused intent that the self is gradually purified and uplifted. The alchemists knew that the process required patience, dedication, and unwavering belief in the final outcome. Similarly, modern practitioners of mental and spiritual alchemy must cultivate their will, knowing that each challenge and setback is part of the greater journey toward self-mastery. As the Rosicrucians teach, the true alchemist is one who has mastered the art of inner transformation, using the will not only to transcend personal limitations but also to align with the greater cosmic order. Thus, the will is not merely a tool but the very essence of alchemy itself, the fire that transforms the soul from base to gold. Chapter 5. Conquering Fear and Doubt, The Will's Battle with the Ego In the labyrinth of the human soul, few forces are as pervasive or as deceptive as fear and doubt. They are the shadows cast by the ego, ever vigilant to maintain its grip over the individual's consciousness. The ego thrives on separation, on the illusion that we are limited, disconnected from the infinite. 
It whispers narratives of inadequacy, constructing a wall of doubt between us and the divine essence of will that resides within. To conquer fear and doubt is to begin dismantling this illusory wall and reclaim the boundless power that has always been yours. In the esoteric traditions, especially within Gnosticism and Hermetic thought, fear is seen as the offspring of ignorance, the cloud that shrouds the mind in illusions of failure and limitation. Only by recognizing the ego as a false master can we truly liberate ourselves and allow the will to soar toward its full potential. The ego is not inherently malevolent. Rather, it is a protective mechanism that has evolved to help us navigate the material world. However, in the spiritual journey, it becomes a formidable opponent when it oversteps its bounds, assuming a position of dominance over the higher self. The Gnostics spoke of the archons, forces of ignorance and control, embodiments of fear and limitation. In modern terms, these archons can be understood as the constructs of the ego, invisible chains that bind the soul to fear and doubt. To overcome the ego is not to destroy it, but to transcend it, to see through its illusions and reclaim the will as the true sovereign of your inner world. The Rosicrucians, too, believed in the practice of quieting the ego through deep self-reflection and meditative practices, understanding that the ego's power is rooted in the unchecked mind. Conquering fear and doubt begins with awareness. Awareness is the sacred flame that illuminates the darkest corners of the mind, revealing the subtle movements of the ego. When fear arises, it is an opportunity to observe, not to react. Through this observation, you begin to separate yourself from the fear, recognizing it as a construct, not an immutable truth. The will, when honed through disciplined practice, can neutralize fear by reframing it as a challenge rather than a threat. The hermetic principle of mentalism reminds us that, the all is mind, and thus, the power to reshape our mental landscape is inherent within us. Fear and doubt only hold sway when we forget this essential truth. Through consistent meditative practice, one can learn to confront fears not as enemies, but as temporary distortions of reality, illusions that dissipate in the light of true will. Ritual and meditation are powerful tools in this alchemical process of transmuting fear into power. The ancient adepts understood that ritualized action speaks directly to the subconscious, the realm where fear often hides. Through carefully structured rituals, one can access the deeper layers of the psyche, confronting the fears and doubts embedded in the unconscious mind. A simple yet profound ritual involves creating a sacred space, invoking protective symbols such as the pentagram or ankh, and stating affirmations that align with the higher will. In the stillness of meditation, one can focus on the breath as a gateway to inner peace, allowing the will to dissolve the tension that fear creates. Over time, these practices fortify the mind, making it impervious to the subtle attacks of doubt that arise from the ego. Ultimately, the battle against fear and doubt is an ongoing one, for the ego is ever adaptive, finding new ways to reassert itself. However, as you cultivate the power of will, these forces lose their hold. With each victory over fear, the will grows stronger, more refined, and more aligned with the universal current of creation. The Gnostic sage knew that true power does not come from avoiding fear but from confronting it head-on, transforming it into a force for growth. Likewise, the Rosicrucians taught that the individual must pass through the dark night of the soul, the period of deepest doubt and fear, before emerging into the light of true understanding and mastery. The will, once fully awakened, is the key to this transformation, unlocking the door to a life unbound by the illusions of the ego and the limitations of fear. Chapter 6. The Warrior's Will. Esoteric Teachings on Strength and Discipline. In the esoteric traditions, the figure of the warrior is a symbol of inner strength and discipline, embodying the will to transcend adversity, conquer the self, and ultimately master the external world. The warrior's path is not one of brute force but of unwavering focus, self-control, 
and alignment with higher principles. Ancient orders, such as the Rosicrucians and the Knights Templar, held the image of the spiritual warrior in high regard, for it represented the union of courage and wisdom. In this context, the warrior's will is seen as the capacity to face both inner and outer challenges with an unyielding resolve. This chapter will delve into the esoteric understanding of willpower as a discipline, exploring how the teachings of the warrior archetype provide the foundation for personal mastery and spiritual evolution. The warrior's will is rooted in the concept of inner discipline, a mastery over one's impulses, desires, and distractions. In Hermeticism, the principle of self-control is central to cultivating true willpower. Without discipline, the mind is scattered, and the will, instead of being a focused beam of light, becomes diffused and ineffective. Esoteric teachings often describe the human soul as a battlefield where the lower impulses, fear, doubt, desire, must be overcome by the higher faculties of wisdom, courage, and will. Just as a warrior must train their body and mind to respond with precision and strength, the spiritual aspirant must train their will through the discipline of daily practice, meditation, and self-restraint. This self-discipline is not merely about control over external behaviors but about the cultivation of an inner state of calm, where the higher self can direct the will without interference from lower emotional states. True strength in the esoteric tradition is not measured by physical prowess but by resilience of spirit and mental clarity. The warrior archetype teaches that strength comes from the ability to withstand adversity without being consumed by it. Esoteric warriors do not engage in battle for the sake of victory over others, but to achieve mastery over the self. Gnostic and Rosicrucian teachings speak of the battle against the archons or lower forces that seek to entrap the soul in illusion and ignorance. The will, when properly aligned, becomes the sword that cuts through these illusions, allowing the spiritual warrior to maintain clarity of purpose and direction. In this way, strength is also about discernment, the ability to distinguish between what serves the higher self and what merely satisfies the ego's desires. Discipline is a key aspect of the warrior's will. In the same way that a sword must be tempered through fire and repeatedly forged to become unbreakable, the will must be refined through consistent practice and perseverance. Esoteric traditions emphasize the importance of ritual, routine, and dedication as methods of honing the will. The Knights Templar, for example, were known for their strict codes of conduct, where daily discipline in prayer, meditation, and physical training were essential components of their spiritual path. Similarly, Rosicrucian teachings stress that only through dedicated practice can one begin to access the deeper layers of wisdom and power. Willpower grows not through sporadic bursts of effort but through steady, consistent action over time. The ultimate lesson of the warrior's will is that true power lies not in domination over others, but in self-mastery. The warrior understands that the external world is a reflection of the internal state, and by mastering the self, one can influence the external world with greater precision and effectiveness. In this way, the warrior's journey is one of inward conquest. It is the path of overcoming inner weaknesses, fears, and doubts so that the will can express itself fully and freely. This inner mastery is what allows the warrior to move through the world with calm confidence, unshaken by external circumstances. Through disciplined willpower, the spiritual warrior becomes an agent of higher purpose, aligned with the forces of the cosmos, and able to manifest their intentions with clarity and power. In conclusion, the teachings of the esoteric warrior provide profound insights into the cultivation of strength and discipline through the will. By embodying the warrior archetype, one learns that true power is not about force but about the mastery of the self. The path of the spiritual warrior is one of relentless discipline, focused intention, and resilience in the face of adversity. As the will is refined and strengthened, the warrior becomes a master of their own destiny 
able to navigate the challenges of life with grace, precision, and unwavering purpose. The warrior's will is the foundation upon which all other forms of personal and spiritual mastery are built, serving as a guiding force in the quest for enlightenment and self-realization. Chapter 7. Silence and Focus. Cultivating the Will Through Stillness. Within the sanctuary of stillness, the will finds its greatest strength. In the ancient teachings of Rosicrucianism, Hermeticism, and other esoteric traditions, silence is not merely the absence of sound but a profound state of inner quiet that allows the soul to connect with the deeper rhythms of the cosmos. In this silence, the personal will is no longer distracted or dispersed by the noise of mundane concerns and anxieties. It becomes a laser-like force, capable of penetrating the veil of illusions that obscure higher truths. To cultivate the will through silence is to engage in a sacred process of purification, where the distractions of the lower self dissolve, allowing the higher self to take command. The ancient sages spoke of silence as the furnace of the spirit, where the raw potential of the will is forged into a refined instrument of power and creation. The power of silence lies in its ability to still the mind, the emotions, and the ego's incessant chatter. In the practice of stillness, the will learns to direct itself with precision. This is where focus, the twin of silence, comes into play. In mystical teachings, focus is considered the anchor that grounds the will in a single point, making it more effective in manifestation. Just as light becomes a powerful force when concentrated into a laser beam, so too does the will when it is concentrated through focus. The Rosicrucians taught that true focus is not about force but about allowing the natural alignment of thought, emotion, and intention to flow harmoniously toward a single goal. In this way, focus and silence are not acts of willful suppression but of spiritual attunement, allowing one to tap into the deeper currents of universal will. The hermetic principle of mentalism, which states that, the all is mind, reinforces the idea that mastering the mind through stillness and focus leads to mastery of the external world. In the state of deep focus, the will becomes one with the mind of the universe, allowing the practitioner to influence the material world through mental and spiritual alignment. This is why hermetic practitioners and mystics throughout the ages have emphasized meditation, breath control, and the discipline of silence. By cultivating inner quiet, one aligns with the subtle energies of the cosmos, allowing their will to act as a conduit for higher forces. The act of focus becomes not just a mental discipline but a spiritual practice, where the practitioner merges their will with the divine will, resulting in effortless manifestation. Yet, the path to mastering silence and focus is not without its challenges. The mind, conditioned by years of external stimuli, often resists the call to stillness. It rebels with thoughts, doubts, and fears, pulling the will in multiple directions. The first step, therefore, is to recognize that this inner chaos is part of the process of purification. In Gnostic and Hermetic teachings, this phase is often referred to as the Negretto, or the Black Stage of Alchemy, where the mind confronts its own darkness and fragmentation. It is through the discipline of returning to silence, again and again, that the will becomes strong enough to transcend this chaos. The Rosicrucians often liken this process to the taming of a wild horse. The mind may resist at first, but with patience and practice, it becomes a loyal servant to the will. In practical terms, the cultivation of silence and focus requires daily commitment. Begin with moments of intentional stillness, whether through meditation, breathwork, or simply sitting in silence. Allow the mind to settle, not by force, but by gentle guidance. When distractions arise, do not fight them. Acknowledge them, and then return to the quiet center of your being. As the practice deepens, you will find that the distractions lose their power, and the will strengthens. Focus on a single point, whether a candle flame, a symbol of personal power, or a simple mantra. 
Through repeated practice, the ability to focus will sharpen, and the will, no longer scattered by external noise, will become a potent force, capable of manifesting your deepest desires and aligning with the cosmic will. Chapter 8. Esoteric Rituals to Unleash Willpower In the ancient halls of wisdom, where the light of understanding shines through the veils of mystery, rituals have always served as bridges between the seen and unseen realms. These practices are not mere repetitions of symbols or words, but living acts that focus the will, aligning it with the cosmic forces that shape existence. When one engages in ritual with conscious intent, they are not just moving their physical body but activating the currents of energy that connect the physical world to the spiritual dimensions. Rituals, in this sense, are the keys that open the doors to deeper realities, allowing the practitioner to tap into an inexhaustible well of power that transcends the mundane. In the context of willpower, ritual becomes an indispensable tool, a method by which the practitioner gathers, concentrates, and directs their internal forces, honing their will into an instrument of precision and strength. The Rosicrucians, Gnostics, and Hermetic scholars understood that rituals were not simply external displays, they were mirrors of inner transformation. When you light a candle or trace a sacred symbol, you are not just affecting the outer world, you are reconfiguring the inner architecture of your mind and spirit. The great esoteric masters taught that the universe itself is a vast, living ritual, where each star, planet, and element participates in a cosmic dance of will and purpose. Thus, when we perform rituals with the intent of strengthening our will, we are participating in this greater harmony, aligning our personal energies with the divine order. It is through this alignment that our will becomes magnified, imbued with a force that transcends the limits of ordinary human effort. One of the foundational rituals in the esoteric traditions is the practice of the pentagram, a symbol of protection, balance, and the mastery of the elements. The pentagram, when inscribed in the air or visualized in the mind's eye, serves as a tool to focus and sharpen the will. Each point represents an element, earth, air, fire, water, and spirit, reflecting the mastery of these forces within the self. In performing a ritual with the pentagram, the practitioner commands the elements of nature, aligning them with their inner purpose. Visualizing the pentagram during moments of doubt or weakness can be a powerful reminder that the will, when properly aligned, can overcome any obstacle. This is a ritual of both protection and empowerment, allowing the practitioner to stand firm in the face of external and internal challenges. Another powerful ritual for willpower is the creation of a personal sigil. A sigil is a symbol crafted from the practitioner's intention, a visual representation of their will made manifest. In crafting a sigil, one begins by distilling their desire into a simple, potent phrase, one that encapsulates the essence of their goal. The letters of this phrase are then combined and reconfigured into a unique symbol, which serves as a direct link between the conscious mind and the subconscious. Once the sigil is created, it is charged through meditation, visualization, or other esoteric practices, allowing the practitioner to implant their will deep within their psyche. The sigil then acts as a silent guide subtly influencing thoughts, emotions, and actions in alignment with the desired outcome. In this way, the ritual of sigil creation is a form of mental alchemy, transforming abstract desire into concrete willpower. Chanting sacred mantras or invocations is another method to channel and amplify willpower. The vibrational quality of spoken words resonates with the deeper layers of the mind and spirit. Ancient occult traditions have long recognized the power of the voice, seeing it as an instrument capable of shaping reality itself. When words are spoken with focused intent, they carry the energy of that intent into the world. Certain mantras or phrases, when repeated during ritual, act as conduits of divine energy, aligning the practitioner's will with higher, cosmic forces. Whether invoking ancient deities, cosmic principles, or personal affirmations, 
The act of chanting centers the mind and strengthens the will, allowing it to pierce through distractions and obstacles. In conclusion, the use of ritual in esoteric practice is more than a symbolic gesture. It is a deliberate act of will, a process by which the practitioner aligns their inner world with the forces of the cosmos. Whether through the pentagram ritual, sigil creation, or chanting, these practices serve as tools to focus and strengthen the will. They allow the practitioner to transcend the ordinary limitations of the mind, accessing deeper layers of power and potential. Through ritual, the will becomes not just an internal force but a bridge between the physical and spiritual realms, capable of influencing and shaping reality itself. Those who engage in these ancient practices with dedication and focus will find that their willpower becomes an indomitable force, capable of manifesting their desires and guiding them toward their highest purpose. Chapter 9. The Will and Manifestation, Hermetic Secrets to Creation in the heart of ancient wisdom, it is understood that the mind, the will, and manifestation are not separate processes but interwoven threads of the same cosmic fabric. The Hermetic tradition teaches that all manifestation begins in the mind, where the first seed of thought germinates into desire, intention, and finally, reality. To manifest something is not merely to summon it from the void but to align one's personal will with the infinite creative power of the universe. Hermetic masters, who understood the esoteric laws of creation, knew that the will, when harmonized with these laws, held the key to shaping both the visible and invisible worlds. By mastering the art of will and its alignment with universal laws, one can draw forth whatever the heart desires, whether material success, spiritual growth, or profound understanding of the mysteries of life. The principle of mentalism, as taught in Hermetic philosophy, reveals that the universe itself is a mental creation, everything begins and ends in the mind of the all. Our individual consciousness is a reflection of this universal mind, and thus our thoughts, guided by will, have the capacity to shape reality. This is not a matter of simplistic wish fulfillment but of deep alignment with the cosmic laws that govern manifestation. The adept must first learn to govern their own thoughts, for scattered, undisciplined thinking will only bring forth fragmented, unfocused outcomes. The will must be trained to focus the mind's creative energies with precision, much like a lens focusing sunlight to ignite a flame. Through concentrated thought, Aligned with universal principles, the adept directs the flow of manifestation. To manifest something specific, the will must work in unison with visualization and belief. Hermetic masters understood that images created in the mind act as blueprints for reality. This is the essence of, as above, so below. What is crafted in the higher realms of thought will descend into the material world when infused with the vital force of willpower. By visualizing clearly and consistently, one creates an energetic mold in the astral plane, which in time crystallizes into form in the physical world. However, the power of visualization must be paired with unwavering belief, for doubt and fear will dissolve the energetic structures before they manifest. In this, the will becomes the bridge between the formless and the formed, drawing forth from the ethereal what is desired in the tangible. But manifestation does not rely on will and visualization alone. It requires harmony with the universal laws, for nothing can be created that goes against the cosmic order. This is where many fail in their attempts to manifest, for they act from selfish or discordant desires, which ultimately result in frustration and blockages. The universe responds to intention that resonates with its flow, not with the ego's demands. The Hermetic Law of Correspondence teaches that we must be in alignment with the higher forces to bring about true manifestation. The will must be in sync with the will of the cosmos, and desires must be purified to reflect the greater good, not just personal gain. When this balance is achieved, the process of manifestation flows naturally and effortlessly. Therefore, the practice of manifestation is not a one-time act but a discipline, 
a lifelong cultivation of the will, mind, and heart in alignment with the divine. The adept must not only visualize their goals but also cultivate the inner qualities that support those goals. Patience, perseverance, clarity of purpose, and the ability to release attachment to specific outcomes. True manifestation is not about forcing reality into shape but about creating the conditions within oneself for the desired reality to emerge. It is a dance of subtlety, where the will directs the mind, the mind shapes the vision, and the vision, through alignment with universal laws, becomes reality. To bring this wisdom into practice, one must first engage in daily visualization exercises, focusing the mind on the desired outcome as if it has already come to pass. This practice aligns the mental energies with the vibrational frequencies of the intended reality. Next, the practitioner must engage the will, committing fully to the vision without doubt or hesitation, acting in alignment with it through both thought and deed. Finally, it is essential to reflect on the purity of the intention, ensuring it is harmonious with the greater good and in alignment with universal laws. When all these forces converge, thought, will, and cosmic alignment, manifestation occurs not as a miraculous event but as the natural consequence of living in harmony with the divine flow of creation. Chapter 10. Aligning the Will with Universal Laws in the ancient wisdom passed down through hermetic, gnostic, and esoteric traditions, there exists a sacred principle that guides all aspects of creation, the universal laws. These laws are the foundation of existence, operating invisibly, yet influencing every movement, thought, and manifestation in the cosmos. To align one's personal will with these universal laws is to step into the flow of divine intelligence, where intention and reality merge seamlessly. When the will is in harmony with the laws that govern the cosmos, obstacles fall away, and one's power to manifest becomes unbound. It is a mystical dance between the individual and the divine, where inner forces align with outer creation. For those seeking true mastery, the wisdom of these laws is essential, and the key lies in understanding how they operate both within and beyond the mind. The seven hermetic principles form the core of this ancient teaching, each one revealing a profound secret about the nature of reality and how the will interacts with the universe. The first principle, mentalism, states that the all is mind, implying that all of creation is a mental projection, and the mind is the root of all manifestations. When you grasp that reality itself is a mental construct, you realize that aligning your will with this law requires mastering your thoughts. Thoughts are the seeds of creation, and the power to direct them is the first step toward cosmic alignment. By maintaining clarity of thought and avoiding chaotic mental states, you align your will with the great mental force that sustains the universe. The law of correspondence, famously expressed as, as above, so below, as within, so without, reveals that there is a reflective nature between the microcosm, the individual, and the macrocosm, the universe. To align with this law, one must understand that the external world mirrors the internal state. Every thought, emotion, and intention you hold within will manifest in some form in your outer reality. Therefore, refining the inner world becomes paramount for those seeking to master their external circumstances. When your personal will resonates with this law, you become a conscious creator, shaping reality from the inside out. The power to change the world around you lies in the transformation of your internal state. The third principle, the law of vibration, teaches that nothing rests, everything moves and vibrates. Every thought, emotion, and object in the universe vibrates at a specific frequency, and these vibrations determine the experiences that come into your life. To align your will with this law, you must cultivate the ability to raise your personal vibration. High-frequency emotions like love, joy, and gratitude attract more of the same, whereas lower-frequency emotions such as fear or anger draw experiences that mirror those vibrations. 
Mastery of this law requires the constant practice of choosing higher vibrational states, ensuring that your will is in harmony with the forces of creation. Another critical law is the law of polarity, which teaches that everything has its opposite, light and dark, hot and cold, high and low. To master this law, you must learn to navigate the duality of existence without becoming lost in it. The adept knows that even in moments of struggle or adversity, the opposite pole of success and triumph exists. By aligning your will with this principle, you can transmute any negative situation into a positive one, simply by focusing your energy on its opposite. This power of transmutation, drawn from hermetic alchemy, is a tool of the will to reshape circumstances and create balance where there was once chaos. The law of rhythm governs the cycles of creation, teaching that everything flows in and out, rises and falls. Like the tides, the universe operates on cycles, and those who align with this law learn to flow with its rhythms rather than resist them. Applying your will in harmony with this law means knowing when to act and when to wait, when to push forward and when to yield. Just as the moon waxes and wanes, so too does the energy of the cosmos. The wise practitioner times their actions to the rhythm of the universe, using moments of high energy for manifestation and moments of low energy for introspection and growth. The principle of cause and effect reveals that nothing happens by chance, every action has a corresponding reaction. The will, when aligned with this law, becomes the cause that generates a desired effect. Nothing in life is random. There is only the intricate dance of cause and consequence. By understanding this, the practitioner takes full responsibility for their reality, knowing that every thought, word, and deed sets into motion a chain of events. By mastering this principle, you ensure that your will initiates only the causes that lead to desired outcomes. Lastly, the law of gender, which is not limited to the physical sense, teaches that creation requires both masculine, active, and feminine, receptive, energies. This balance of forces is essential for the manifestation of the will. The active energy is the directive force that initiates action, while the receptive energy is what allows for gestation and growth. To align your will with this law, you must learn to balance these forces within yourself. Know when to act, and when to wait. Know when to exert force, and when to allow. Mastering this principle creates a harmonious flow where the will becomes a balanced force of creation, capable of bringing forth desired outcomes in perfect timing. Aligning the will with these universal laws creates a state of inner harmony that resonates with the very fabric of the cosmos. It is through this alignment that the will becomes invincible no longer bound by personal limitations or external obstacles. When the individual will is attuned to the flow of the divine will, life unfolds with a sense of purpose and ease. The practitioner no longer struggles against the currents of existence but moves in harmony with them, allowing their intentions to manifest effortlessly. This is the true secret of the ancient masters, not to impose one's will upon the world, but to merge it with the higher laws that govern all creation. And in this alignment, the will is transformed from a mere personal force into a cosmic one, capable of shaping reality itself. Chapter 11. Mastering Time. The Will's Control Over the Temporal World. Time, as understood through esoteric wisdom, is not the rigid, linear force that it appears to be on the surface. Mystical traditions, particularly hermetic and Gnostic teachings, have long asserted that time is a construct that can be bent and manipulated through mastery of the will. Just as the eternal soul moves beyond the limitations of the physical body, the enlightened will is capable of transcending the apparent boundaries of time, stretching moments of focus into vast spaces of creation and compressing long periods of trial into flashes of revelation. The temporal world is fluid for those who understand its nature. Time, for the adept of willpower, becomes a servant rather than a master. To begin grasping this truth, 
one must first detach from the everyday perception of time as an unchangeable flow and see it as another dimension of experience. One that, like thought, emotion, or physical reality, can be influenced by the directed energy of the mind. The Hermetic tradition, as expressed in the Kabbalion, speaks of rhythm as a key principle governing time. The Hermetic axiom, everything flows out and in. Everything has its tides. All things rise and fall. The pendulum swing manifests in everything, reflects the rhythm of the universe and, by extension, the rhythm of time. The wise, knowing the cycles of nature and life, do not fight against time but align themselves with its rhythm. Yet, they are not its passive subjects. By mastering the oscillations of time through disciplined will, they can speed up or slow down their subjective experience of events. Time, then, becomes a field of possibility, one in which the mind plays the role of a conductor, harmonizing the symphony of life. Through deep contemplation and understanding of these cycles, the seeker can learn to work with, and eventually transcend, the natural ebb and flow of time. One of the greatest tools for mastering time is the development of inner stillness. In moments of deep silence and concentration, time seems to dissolve, and the practitioner steps beyond the rush of minutes and hours into an eternal present. The Rosicrucian and Gnostic traditions emphasize that in the state of spiritual focus, time ceases to dominate the consciousness. This is the moment in which the will, free from the temporal, becomes fully potent. The physical world is bound by time, but the spiritual will is not. This is why meditation is not only an exercise in spiritual growth but also a practice of temporal mastery. As one learns to quiet the mind, the chains of time are loosened, and in this inner space, new realities can be shaped. Here, the will works without the restrictions imposed by the ticking of the clock. Furthermore, the master of time understands the importance of acting within divine timing. While time is malleable, there is a universal order to things, and knowing when to act is as important as having the will to act. Esoteric teachings from the Hermetic tradition speak of the importance of aligning one's will with cosmic rhythms. This is the art of timing, knowing when to plant and when to reap, when to push forward and when to retreat. The unwise push against the tide, exhausting themselves and their will. The wise, however, wait for the tide to rise in their favor, knowing that the right moment will amplify their efforts a thousandfold. Aligning with these cycles allows one to move in harmony with the universe, which in turn strengthens the power of one's will. Practically, mastering time involves cultivating both patience and decisiveness. The will must be strong enough to act when the moment is right, yet tempered enough to wait for that moment to arrive. It is in this balance that true mastery is found. Many are slaves to time, reacting impulsively to its pressures, fearing the passage of years, and lamenting lost opportunities. But those who have learned the art of temporal mastery have freed themselves from this bondage. They understand that time is an illusion, an illusion that, once penetrated by the mind and will, can be reshaped according to one's highest purpose. The adept recognizes that by shaping time from within, through disciplined thought and aligned intention, the external experience of time is naturally transformed. The temporal world, then, bends to the will of the one who has mastered the self. Chapter 12. The Philosopher's Stone, Achieving Victory Through Willpower In the ancient mysteries of alchemy, the Philosopher's Stone represents the culmination of the spiritual and material journey. It is the elusive substance that promises the transmutation of base metals into gold, the elixir of life, and the ultimate mastery of the self. Yet, this pursuit is not merely an external endeavor. The true philosopher's stone is the refined essence of the human will, forged through trials of the soul, tempered in the fires of transformation, and polished through the continual effort of inner alchemy. As we delve into this chapter, 
we explore how the Philosopher's Stone symbolizes the achievement of total mastery through the alignment of personal will with cosmic forces. The process of discovering the Philosopher's Stone begins with understanding that the will is the alchemist's tool. Just as the adept labors in the laboratory to turn lead into gold, so too must the seeker of wisdom refine the raw material of their inner self. The will, when properly directed, serves as the agent of this transformation. It is the force that transmutes fear into courage, ignorance into wisdom, and doubt into certainty. The ancient alchemists knew that the true gold they sought was not of the physical realm but was, instead, the purified and ennobled spirit, which could navigate the seen and unseen worlds with equal mastery. In alchemical symbolism, the stages of transformation, from Negretto, blackening, through albedo, whitening, to rubedo, reddening, reflect the journey of the soul through darkness, purification, and ultimate illumination. The willpower that sustains this journey is not merely a passive force but an active, conscious energy that shapes reality. To reach the state of rubedo, or the red king, one must first confront the inner shadows, transmuting the baser desires and emotions that obscure the true will. This is the process of inner refinement where the ego's desires are gradually aligned with the higher self's intentions. The Philosopher's Stone, then, is not a physical object but the symbol of having achieved this divine synthesis. The will becomes victorious when it achieves harmony with the universal laws that govern all creation. The Philosopher's Stone is the ultimate expression of this victory for it signifies the individual's ability to transcend the limitations of the lower mind and to work in accordance with the divine will. The secret of the stone lies in the realization that the external world mirrors the internal state of the mind. Once the mind is refined, clear, and aligned with the higher principles, the outer reality reshapes itself accordingly. In this way, the philosopher's stone is not a fixed point, but rather an ever-evolving state of being, where willpower and wisdom flow seamlessly together to bring forth the highest manifestations of one's potential. The path to uncovering your inner philosopher's stone requires dedication to the daily practice of mental and spiritual alchemy. Meditation, visualization, and self-discipline are key practices for refining the will. Visualizing oneself as the alchemist, working within the crucible of the mind, one can begin to dissolve negative patterns and reassemble them into their highest forms. Each mental block that is transmuted brings one closer to the Philosopher's Stone, which resides within, waiting to be uncovered. Through consistent effort, the will becomes strong and unwavering, capable of transforming the lead of everyday challenges into the gold of enlightenment and success. As you continue to refine your will through the esoteric practices discussed throughout this book, you will notice that the power of your thoughts, intentions, and actions increases. You become the alchemist of your own destiny, shaping your life with precision and purpose. The Philosopher's Stone symbolizes the completion of this work, the ultimate victory over inner limitations and external challenges. In achieving this state, you become aligned with the creative forces of the universe, wielding your will as a tool for both personal mastery and spiritual fulfillment. The journey of the alchemist is never truly finished, for the process of refinement is eternal, but in discovering the philosopher's stone, you take your place among the enlightened, those who have mastered the art of transformation. Chapter 13. Willpower and Enlightenment, The Final Ascent as we draw near the final mysteries of willpower, we enter the sacred space where the power of the will transcends earthly pursuits and aligns with the higher truths of the universe. In this chapter, we journey beyond the material, beyond even personal mastery, into the realms where willpower becomes a bridge to enlightenment. Here, the will is no longer merely a tool to shape the world but a conduit for the divine. It is through the refinement of willpower, tempered by discipline and purified by wisdom, that the individual soul ascends toward the ultimate union with the cosmos, transcending the limits of the self and dissolving into the infinite. In Gnostic teachings, 
The ascent of the soul is marked by the shedding of ignorance and the embrace of divine knowledge, or gnosis. Willpower plays a critical role in this process, for it is through the steady application of the will that the soul breaks free from the illusions of the material world, symbolized by the demiurge and the archons. The ego, with its fears and desires, must be gradually subdued by the will, which then turns inward to seek the divine spark hidden within. This spark, once uncovered, becomes the guiding light on the path to enlightenment, leading the soul to transcend the world of forms and enter the realm of pure consciousness. The Hermetic tradition also speaks to this final ascent, emphasizing that the ultimate goal of willpower is not to dominate or control the external world, but to master the internal self. The principle of mentalism, the all is mind, teaches that reality is a reflection of consciousness, and therefore, the true power lies not in manipulating outer circumstances but in mastering one's own mind. When the will is aligned with the universal mind, it ceases to be personal and becomes an expression of the cosmic order. In this state, the individual no longer strives to impose their will upon the world but allows the divine will to flow through them manifesting effortlessly and in perfect harmony with the universe. As the will ascends to this level of mastery, the practitioner experiences a profound shift in perception. No longer bound by the dualities of success and failure, or the struggles of gain and loss, the will becomes a force of pure being, existing in the present moment with clarity and peace. This state of enlightened willpower is the culmination of the alchemical process, where the base elements of the ego and lower desires have been transmuted into spiritual gold. The Philosopher's Stone, symbolizing the ultimate achievement of inner alchemy, is not an object or a destination, but the realization of one's own divine nature and the seamless alignment of personal will with the divine will. In practical terms, achieving this state of enlightened willpower requires sustained practice, patience, and a deep commitment to spiritual growth. The exercises and rituals presented throughout this book serve as stepping stones toward this goal, gradually refining the mind, emotions, and desires until they resonate with the higher frequencies of the cosmos. Meditation, visualization, and ritual are not merely tools for personal success but gateways to higher consciousness. As the practitioner deepens their mastery of these practices, they find that the will becomes an effortless force acting in perfect synchronicity with the rhythms of the universe. In this state of harmony, the individual experiences the freedom of true enlightenment, where the boundaries between the self and the cosmos dissolve, and the will flows as an expression of the divine. This journey toward enlightened willpower is not a linear path, nor is it one that ends with a final destination. It is a cyclical process, where each level of mastery opens the door to deeper mysteries and higher levels of consciousness. The practitioner who has achieved this state of enlightenment understands that the will is not something to be used or exerted but something to be lived. It becomes a way of being, a state of alignment with the cosmic forces that shape reality. In this state, one no longer seeks power, for they have become power itself a living embodiment of the divine will, moving through the world with grace, purpose, and infinite wisdom. Thus, the final ascent of willpower is not about the conquest of external challenges, but the transcendence of the self. It is the realization that the will, when aligned with the divine, is limitless and eternal, capable of creating not just personal success but spiritual awakening. As you continue on this path, Remember that the will is your guide, your teacher, and your greatest ally in the pursuit of enlightenment. Nurture it, refine it, and trust in its power to lead you to the highest truths of existence. For in the end, the will is not merely a force within you, it is the divine essence that connects you to the infinite, the eternal, and the sublime. As we approach the conclusion, if you've been enjoying the audiobook, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what your biggest takeaway has been. Walking the Path of the Invincible Will As we now approach the culmination of this sacred journey, 
it becomes clear that willpower, the core focus of this work, transcends all ordinary perceptions of strength or perseverance. Will is not merely a tool. It is the very essence of divine intention, coursing through the soul and manifesting through the mind. Like the ancient sages who walked before us, the mastery of will is the alchemical process that transmutes the soul's potential into tangible reality. It is the means through which we align with the highest forces of the cosmos and become co-creators with the universal mind, transcending limitation and weaving our destiny with clarity and purpose. The journey we have embarked upon together is not a simple one. It is an ever-unfolding path that demands dedication, awareness, and profound self-reflection. The teachings of the Hermetic, Gnostic, and Rosicrucian traditions have illuminated the depth of this path, showing us that mastering willpower is not only about controlling our thoughts, emotions, or desires, it is about shaping our inner reality in alignment with the higher laws of existence. Every chapter has presented a facet of the deeper mysteries, guiding us to realize that will is the gateway to spiritual ascension, personal mastery, and the manifestation of success in the world. The first steps on this journey are taken by acknowledging the presence of the will as the bridge between the individual self and the infinite forces of the cosmos. Through the exploration of hermetic principles, we have learned that willpower is the hidden thread connecting the microcosm to the macrocosm. The wisdom of, as above, so below, shows us that our inner state determines our outer reality. By harnessing the will, we become architects of our existence, aligning personal desires with the great cosmic currents that shape all things. Through practices of thought mastery, mental transmutation, and focused intention, we have been shown the art of using our mental faculties to mold reality in harmony with universal laws. But we must also remember that the will is not solely a force of creation. It is also a force of purification and transmutation. The alchemical process is one of refining the base elements of the self, our fears, doubts, and limitations, into the higher, spiritual gold of wisdom, clarity, and power. In overcoming the illusions of the ego, we have seen how the will becomes the sword that cuts through the veils of illusion leading us toward a greater understanding of our true nature. The ego, as presented in Gnostic teachings, seeks to shroud us in doubt and fear, yet it is the will that pierces this darkness and brings us into the light of knowledge and self-realization. Throughout this journey, we have explored the many dimensions of willpower, from the esoteric practices of silence and focus, to the warrior's discipline and the sacred rituals of manifestation. Each of these practices is a doorway into deeper realms of understanding, offering us the tools to sharpen our will and direct it with precision and purpose. Whether it is through meditation, visualization, or ritual, we have learned that the will, when properly cultivated, becomes an indomitable force, capable of transcending time, bending the material world, and bringing forth the highest aspirations of the soul. As you step forward into your own mastery, it is important to remember that the path of the invincible will is a continuous journey. The true alchemist understands that life is a process of constant refinement and growth, an endless opportunity to transmute the raw material of experience into wisdom, love, and power. Each day presents new challenges, new opportunities to strengthen your will and bring it into alignment with your highest self. The practices you have learned in this book are only the beginning. They are the foundation upon which you will continue to build, creating a life that is in harmony with both your personal desires and the greater forces of the universe. The invincible will is not bound by the limitations of time, space, or circumstance. It is the force that transcends all boundaries, connecting you to the infinite potential that resides within and around you. As you walk this path, remember that you are never alone. You are part of an ancient lineage of wisdom seekers, initiates, and adepts who have walked this path before you, and their knowledge is woven into the very fabric of existence. With each step you take, you are adding to this great tapestry, 
contributing to the collective evolution of consciousness. Now, as you prepare to leave these teachings behind and continue your journey, carry with you the knowledge that you are the master of your fate. The power of your will is infinite. It is the key to unlocking the doors of personal transformation, spiritual enlightenment, and ultimate success. Let your will be guided by wisdom, nurtured by love, and aligned with the highest good, and you will become invincible. Your path is clear, and the universe awaits your command. Walk forward with confidence, knowing that the power of the cosmos is at your side, and the invincible will is your eternal companion.